we're going to tie a Chernobyl hopper. Okay, this hopper would be for the grasshopper season in the summertime. Um, I tie it in about 15 different colors and configurations and sizes and everything else. This is kind of a standard tan pattern, floats like a cork, and a lot of people look at them and they're like, wow, they're really, really complex, hard to do, and they're really not that hard to do. We're gonna go back to our hook again. This hook, we're gonna set it in the in the vise here, nice, stable, flat. Um, this is a 3X long number eight. It doesn't have to be light, light wire because the foam is substantial that we're putting in here and it'll float like a cork. So I'm gonna take my bobbin. I've, I'm using, I've got three yacht, um, three yacht uh, monocord on here. Um, you can use a number of different types of things. I've picked gray just because it's neutral color. So this could be tan or yellow or a number of different, different things. But I'm gonna take that again. I'm gonna tie it in under a two thirds point where we start every fly and we're going to tie that jam knot on there. Okay, cut that off, and I'm going to put a thread base down all the way to the back. Now, I'm going to run it back to that two-thirds point again, right here, and hang. Now, dubbing. Dubbing is a natural material, and this light really doesn't do this justice. The natural light on this, this is my UV super dub that I, that I use, and this stuff just absolutely pops. Um, in natural light, it looks like glass. Um, I, this is a kind of a kind of a hair's ear, kind of tannish, yellowish, hoppery cream kind of pattern uh, dubbing. I'm gonna utilize that, and for the beginning dubbers that are out there, you've got your dubbing wax. I'm gonna take some wax itself, put it on the, the thread itself, get it on there, and then I'm gonna take my dubbing and put now, with dubbing, you notice my hook, my, I, I type backwards on my dubbing because what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dub back and then I'm going to lash down and it'll make a more segmented body for, the, if, for this particular hopper. What you're dubbing yourself is you take a little bit of dubbing, you lay it on flat, you set it on, kind of set it against your material and then I pull right on, start twisting and then I'm going all the same direction, okay? You're not going back and forth like this. Everybody knows how to do this because this is exactly how somebody rolls a booger up to try to throw, throw it away and everybody picks their nose. Nobody will admit that they pick their nose. But if you take this like this, you set it on here, you roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm creating a natural, a natural fiber just like yarn like we used on the previous uh, mohair here leech that we were that we were tying. Okay, I've got a nice bit of bit of material there. Now it's already attached, so all we have to do is run it on to the fly itself. Okay, and you can see I'm building myself a nice flat dubbed body, and this is going to put me right to the very back of the hook like this. Okay. That's a nice hopper coloration. Now, I've got craft foam laminated together. So, I thought I'd talk about this. Craft foam is just what I'm saying it is. You have two mil and you have three mil craft foam and you can find it. I sell all sorts of James Bond top secret colors here at the shop. But you can actually laminate this stuff together. So, if I was going to put together a sheet of lamination, I would actually pull my craft foam out Okay, and I use Super 77 or a couple other types of things, and I would take this, lay this out, I'd cover, spray it, okay, set it aside, take your other color, spray it, set it aside, let it sit for about a minute or whatever, and then it's a adhering material where you can lay it together, smash it all down, let it dry, okay, and then what ends up happening is it gives you a sheet that you can actually trim your material off. So if you look at this, this is, we sell these already pre kind of laid out ahead of time, but this is just basically laminated together two different colors. I've got kind of a, kind of a peachy cream underneath there and then a tan on top, okay? One of our favorite colors around here. I've cut this with my scissors um, out of my 
bar of material that I've laminated, okay, and I've cut this maybe maybe a half an inch, uh, half an inch uh, width, okay. Now I've got a dark color and a light color. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, okay, and they make cutters for this, but I don't even mess around with color because I tell you thousands upon thousands of these a year. And I'm going to, I'm thinking about the back end of the grasshopper. If you look at this right here, you can see how it's kind of kind of got a triangular wedge to it. I'm going to cut that with my scissors. So I'm just going to take my scissors, chop it like that, then flip that over, chop it like that, and that's going to give me kind of a spear point. You can take this and kind of smash it with your fingers just a little bit. It kind of heats that foam up and smashes it down, makes it real, real pliable. And that's important to be smashing it together um, with it real pliable when you go to attach it to the hook. Because I'm going to set this here and set it right here. Now my thread wrap, I'm going to reach over, boom, compress it down, boom, compress it down, boom, compress it down, and then tack it tight to the thing. You can see that's my very, very first segment of my hopper is, is right here. Now if I hadn't heated that up with my fingers or whatever and went to compress it down, or you're using too light of, of thread, that's a recipe for disaster because you come in and poof, you break it then you get to start all over again. Before I move forward, I love rubber legs. Rubber legs are, it's basically spandex from a waistband material and it used to be, you used to be able to pull it all the way apart and they had black and they had uh, white. Now we've got round spandex in different sizes and uh, it's marketed under rubber leg material. I'm going to take your, my spandex like that, or my, my rubber legs like that, and I'm going to pull one full piece out here. And I'm going to use the same, the same piece on through. So if I've got my bobbin back at the back like this, I'm going to set it in like this on the side of the fly like this, wrap once around, twice around, okay? And that will give you back legs. Then I'm going to go away from me, so I'm going to set it in like this, once around, twice around, suck it up. Okay, that's good. You don't have to worry. Make sure they're long enough, not too short, okay, because you can trim this all at the end. But you've got your back set of legs. At this point, I'm going to lift this up, and you're going to see your dubbing right here. I'm going to lash that down. I'm going to move it right back to the two-thirds spot right there. At that point, I'm going to kind of smash my rubber just a little, or my uh, thumb just a little bit, kind of heat that up again, and then see this control wrap, 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 I've sucked it down. And this comes over the top of the fly like this. Back to my rubber legs, I'm going to set it in on this side, once around, twice around. You can see that, then I've got my tag in, leftover one, once around, twice around, boom. Next thing is your indicator, okay? So indicator, most popular flies when they're dry flies, floating like a cork dry flies, are things that people can see. I know I noticed that in the shop, um, parachute atoms, royal wolves, renegades, uh, parachute hoppers, anything that's got white on it sells better than other things. The reason is you can see it. And the older you get, you want to be able to control your situation when you're casting that fish and being able to see it helps. So I use all sorts of different types of indicators. But this is um, some of my Zelon, uh, white Zelon that we sell here at the shop. It's just a floating, floating white, um, white, white fiber, okay? And I'm going to take a piece of that, I'm going to set it right on top. I'm going to throw one control wrap around it, two control wraps around it, suck it down tight. I'm just going to let it hang there, okay? I'm going to deal with this later. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my, pull my stuff forward. Okay, and I'm going to wrap my head that I wanted in there. Now, again, I reach up and I half hitch my thread off at that point in time. Let me show you with half hitch tool. You go once around, twice around, slide it up, boom. Once around, twice around, slide it up, boom. Tighten that up. Now I'm going to trim my thread off. And that leaves you a couple more cuts. Okay, so first one is I'm envisioning somewhat of a mohawk on this thing, so it's visual. When it's floating in the surface film, you have a little tag so you can actually see what's going on. I'm gonna reach in, I'm gonna cut this straight across, just like that, and that gives you a nice 
fluffy indicator that you can add, um, you can add floating to and be real visible. Next thing is, is I got my front end of my hopper. What I usually do is I'll cut that about an eighth of an inch right there like that. And then you can leave it blunt like that, but I usually cut these little corners off of here. Kind of makes me feel like more like a round, great big B-52 kind of hopper. You adjust so your, your hook is in the right position here like this. Cut, cut, cut. And I'm gonna cut, cut, cut. Okay. If you look at from the bottom, you can have a nice furry, nice furry bottom here. You've got nice substantial floating material here. You got legs. And most hoppers when they're on the bank, if they get blown into the water, they're a train wreck anyway. Their, their legs are all over the place and they're flopping around and they're moving. That's what's cool about uh, Chernobyl's is they will float on top of the water. You can actually twitch them and these rubber legs will kind of move. Deadly, deadly pattern. Again, it's got the increments that you want. You got something that you can grease the top of this so it might float, adding a fly float to it. It'll float like a cork. It's kind of natural on the bottom. Now, on, what I usually do is a little bit different with my Chernobyl to make it a little bit more durable. I'll take regular old super glue. Let's put it in here like that. Okay, got my super glue. I'm gonna come in and I'm going to put just a little bit of a drop towards the front of that and a little bit of drop towards the back of that. That's where this. Okay. And then I come in with my accelerator and hit that with that and boom, there you are. Chernobyl hopper. That's my favorite color. All right, thanks you guys.